Welcome to the Clearwater Historical Society Museum and Cultural Center. My name is Allison Dolan. I'm the president of the Clearwater Historical Society. The Clearwater Historical Society was started in 1978, and we have been collecting artifacts about the history of Clearwater and the surrounding areas. Our mission is to collect, exhibit about the culture and the people of Clearwater. The Clearwater Historical Society Museum and Cultural Center was opened in June of 2019. Um, we are situated inside the South Ward School, which was built in 1906. Here at the Clearwater Historical Society, we also own the Plum House, and the furniture that's here, we had our interns put together a setting from the 1900s of what a house would have looked like. We also have in May, we'll be having celebrating the women of Clearwater, and then in September, we'll be celebrating all the restaurants from Clearwater in our Let's Eat exhibit. We have fish fries on the first weekend in May and another one, the first weekend in November. We're hosting a lot of outdoor events because we also have five acres which is covered with oak trees. So it makes a nice setting for any outdoor event. Hi, the Clearwater Historical Society Museum. We are only open on the downstairs at this time of a two-story building. We are run by volunteers and donation only. So come out and see us anytime. We're history in the making. Hi, my name is Alex Gassano and I'm the events coordinator here at the Clearwater Historical Society. Today I would like to tell you about different events happening around the museum. Firstly, we have our speaker series, which is the second and fourth Saturdays of every month. Usually we have a speaker come to speak about a topic or interest. So next we have the South Ward Day, which is an annual celebration commemorating South Ward Elementary School. I want to welcome you to that. It's going to be happening on a Saturday in September. Watch for the date. All our events are on our website and Facebook page, so check them out. Also, um, it would be from 10 to 2, and everybody's welcome to the South Ward School Day. And finally, in November, we have our annual fish fry and general meeting on the first Saturday of uh, November. So we welcome you to these events and more in the future. So come and join us. Thank you. Hi, my name is Trudy Kelly. I'm one of the librarians here at the library at the Clearwater Historical Museum. Uh, we have many, many books about uh, the history of Florida the Tampa Bay area, Clearwater, and surrounding areas. Uh, we also have lots of yearbooks here from the different schools, high schools, junior high, uh, scrapbooks from different companies, from organizations, from individuals. If you'd like to donate books or if you'd like to donate any of the scrapbooks or history that you have, we'd be glad to take them. If you'd like to come and see what we have here or use the library for research, you're more than welcome please contact the museum and we'll find a time to get together. Thank you. Welcome to the Dunedin History Museum, downtown Dunedin at 349 Main Street. My name is Vinnie Luisi, director of the Dunedin History Museum, and we're gonna take a walk through the museum at this time. Let's all go in right now and take a look at the inside of our new renovated museum. The Dunedin History Museum mission is to preserve and keep on record and files all the history of our community. This is a place where individuals that live in Dunedin can find out how our community started, how it grew, and what it's all about. It's also a place where you can discover local history of your family and other resources about your community. In this renovated room, we have all new exhibits that explain the early history of Dunedin onto its present day. Here at our museum is history in the making. Dunedin is always growing and the history continues. We want you to come and join us and learn all about our history of Dunedin and our town. Come and visit us. February is advocacy for museums, and all these communities have their local history, and this local history 
is run by their small towns and they need to be funded. It is you, the people in the community and tourists that watch this, that need to advocate for museums. And if you call your local representative and tell them how important museums are to schools and them and the tourists, the local community, that they need to support the museums, give a call and let their people know to fund these museums and these cultural institutions during the budget years. Welcome to our museum. Please come on in. My name is Monica Drake. I'm the operations manager here at Heritage Village, and you're stepping back in time in our 1915 mercantile store, which was located originally down in Roser Park um, in south, the southern portions of St. Petersburg. This is one of our guests' favorite uh, buildings on our property to come into because it, they can see how many different products there were um, and the types of products that were available to people back in the 19 teens. We're so excited to be able to preserve these types of experiences for our guests. Part of what we do here every day is to preserve, collect, and interpret the history of Pinellas County. In our collection, we have over 20,000 3D objects. And in our archives and library, we have roughly 3,500 pieces of ephemera, which include maps, photographs, diaries, scrapbooks, and all of those things that tell the history of Pinellas County. We've got some really great things going on here at Heritage Village. We're currently in the process of restoring our 1915 Turner Bungalow, which was originally located in Clearwater. And we are getting ready to open an exhibit um, in our McKay Creek Boat Shop, which details the life and work of Clark Mills, one of Pinellas County's early boat builders in the area um, and developer of the Optimus Pram. So thank you for coming to visit and please come back soon because history is happening here. We welcome you to the Largo Area Historical Society. This is our feed store museum. Uh, I'll let you go inside and see what we have. Good evening, everyone. My name is Charlie Harper. I'm president of the Largo Area Historical Society. I'm a lifelong resident of Largo and uh, take a lot of pride in this building and in our museum. We sit in beautiful Largo Central Park uh, across the street from the Largo Public Library. We are open on the first Saturday of every month except for the summer from 10 to 2 in the day. We more than welcome everyone to come by and say hello and visit and see these beautiful displays that we have here. Uh, Largo first was settled in 1843 and we have a lot of history coming forward from that time. From history of cattle and business and the citrus and even turpentine. We've got a rich history in Largo and we would love to sit and chat with you and talk to you and show you our pictures. So come on by anytime. Largo Historical Museum and the Historic Largo Feed Store. Thanks a lot. I'm Bob Fortner, the president of the Palm Harbor Historical Society. It is our great pleasure to maintain and take care of this beautiful Hartley House, which was built in 1919 and became home of the Palm Harbor Historical Museum in 1998. Our mission at the Society is to collect, preserve, and share the heritage of the Palm Harbor area including Crystal Beach, Curlew, East Lake, Ozona, Wall Springs, and Palm Harbor. That encompasses about 30 square miles and 60,000 Pinellas County citizens. I'd like to introduce you now to Carol Courtright, our operations director. Phase one of the museum's new permanent exhibits opened last month, funded by last year's grant from the Faith Mission Fund through the Pinellas Community Foundation. We were awarded another grant for this year, so our Phase 2 exhibits are in the planning stages now. We currently offer guided tours at the Palm Harbor Museum on Fridays and Saturdays. Reservations can be made through Eventbrite. 
and we offer tours for up to six people per time slot so you can get the museum all to yourselves. Later this year, as part of our Phase 2 exhibits, we'll be opening Ida's Kitchen, the original kitchen at the back of the house. We'll have a fresh interpretation of the Hartley family's culinary traditions across the decades. We're also designing exhibits that take a look at the natural history of the Palm Harbor region over time, and we'll delve into some racial and social issues that affected Palm Harbor over the last 100 years or so with a focus on some incidents that happened during the mid 20th century. We're also exploring some very cool ideas for developing exhibits around the museum grounds, including demonstration gardens and a closer look at the Hartley Ladder Factory. Meanwhile, we look forward to greeting visitors and showing off our 102 year old Hartley house and our new exhibits. Come see us. Good afternoon, I'm Bobby Wheeler. I am president and trustee of the Board of the Museum and I would like to welcome you to Safety Harbor Cultural Center. Welcome to our museum. In we go. I'm Robert Scott Anderson. I'm a curator of the museum. What you just passed through from the front door back was our uh, temporary exhibit. Currently we're doing Black History uh, for Black History Month. Our museum starts with the very, very primitive uh, with mastodon bones uh, and artifacts from the Tokabaga uh, Indians and runs through our current history. Uh, recent acquisition was this wagon. Uh, this is the last of the citrus industry in uh, Safety Harbor, and actually pretty much the last of it in Pinellas County. Traveling through here, this is our primitive section. All the items on the wall, unless posted differently, are all from Florida. We have items that range from Odette Philippi. Odette Philippi, who was the first uh, settler uh, under the Armed Occupation Act. Here, uh, a park is named after him, up through what occurred in the Civil War. No. The spa, which the world famous spa uh, from, was purchased by Bailey in 1855. It's still in business today, though it's changed hands numerous times. We have from the first newspapers, to the town burning down. In fact, we are on an archeological site here because on this site was once the Bayshore Motel and it burned down in 1908. And all these artifacts right here have been dug on the property, usually by uh, kids' archeology span classes. We have the original postal desk. Safety Harbor had no addresses. So you had a box number. 1917, short time after being incorporated, the town burned down. And it's slowly being rebuilt. During World War II, we had uh, a number of uh, residents that enlisted. We had five that were killed. We had blackout regulations here. We used to have a police department. They abolished it in 1976. Uh, we're now uh, under the control of the uh, Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. In this room, we have a lot of non-Florida Native American artifacts, and there are some beautiful pieces. This 
Paul, part of the Eugene Powell collection. Uh, and this is our boot ranch room. It's all the artifacts and uh, personal belongings from Al Boyd, the owner of uh, Boot Ranch. Hi, I'm Laura Kepner. For more history in the making, come and visit the Safety Harbor Museum and Cultural Center. Hi, my name is Michelle Abramo. I'm the immediate past president for the Seminole Historical Society and Museum. Welcome to Seminole City Park and our museum. Come on in and let me tell you all about Seminole and our pioneers. This museum has been open for five years, a little more than five years, and the first place we start is with our pioneer families. In the mid-1700s is when we first document our Seminole pioneers, and this is the area that we like to recognize them. But this is the big thing that we really love. This is our Columbian mammoth. This mammoth was discovered in 20. 2007 by a high schooler from Seminole High School and we were able, no one else in Pinellas County was interested in the fossils and we were able to go to the University of Florida's uh, History Museum and offer to take some of the fossils back and put them on display in our museum. So this Columbian mammoth that lived here 11,700 years ago is our mammoth and we're very proud of her. The biggest thing about this display, or the most significant part of this dig, is the fact that the animals that lived here died here, and they were discovered here. They were not sent out by the Ice Age, and one of the most unique animals that was found here was the saber-toothed tiger. This area is part of our American Indian area, and we're very, very proud to say that we're part of the Florida Native American Heritage Trail. It's a... Uh, group of organizations throughout Florida that had been categorized and invited to join this, this particular American Indian Trail or Native American Trail. And we have such great highlights of all of the Indians in our area. And it was not Seminole, our name is not from the word Seminole Indians, but all Native American Indians. And so we highlight many of that here. So this is a huge part. And it's great because our tourist industry has this uh, information out so that people that are following, just like parks, national parks, can come to here to see this. This is our vintage fishing display. Besides fruit, and cattle in our area. Fishing was huge. Families could go to Seminole Lake to fish and we have a patron that donated um, many things that um, are representative of the early days of fishing and all the way up until 1991 which is our great tarpon up there that was caught in a, um, uh, a contest off the Skyway and we have a song that is attributed to us and our Florida crackers and our fishing industry. So one of our most meaningful displays is this one here. It was donated to us from the Seminole United Methodist Church in honor of their 125 year anniversary. It's all of the members of our community that served in World War II. And then of course we've added a military uniform and flag and it just ties the whole thing together and means a lot to our community because it's our pioneer people. History is in the making here at our museum. Please come and join us, learn about our past, our present, and the future of Seminole. Hello, my name is Renee Sousa. I am the Train Depot Coordinator for our 1909 Train Depot and Museum in Tarpon Springs. There's no charge to visit our museum. Our museum and the Tarpon Springs Area Historical Society's mission is to preserve, exhibit, and educate about the history of our unique city of Tarpon Springs. Thank you for visiting our museum. We hope to see you in person.